All right. Welcome, everyone, to today's webinar about WebEx sidebar apps. We're excited to tell you a little bit about our newest feature in our development portfolio. But uh, first, we got a quick little intro uh, into our Slido. We would like to hear about your uh, your favorite programming language for your per for personal projects. So this is not something mandated by work, but it's something that you maybe be doing on the side. What do you like doing? See, we've got some Python, JavaScript. Yeah, Python versus JavaScript. Oh, Python with a big lead. Uh, if you if you if you answered other, drop it in the chat so we like so we can see uh, what you what you like. If I can even find my chat window, <laughs> I can't find it. So you got to tell me, Phil. <laughs> Let's see here. You might say what they're what they're. Uh, Let's see. Nothing yet? All right. All right, well. All right, we got some answers. We got some participants. That was a little trick to get you into our slides. Now now you know where to answer, ask some Q&A questions if you need them. And they are, we'll, we'll be monitoring those and hopefully answering during the webinar. And then at the end, we'll, we'll review them and, and go over them as well. So feel free to drop your Q&A over there in the Slido. Um, and as always, at the end of the, the session, we'll have a, a little survey to find out what you're looking for. And, and let's get started. So yeah, so my name is Adam Weeks. I'm the direct, uh, the manager of uh, developer evangelism here at WebEx. And I'm joined here with by Phil and, and Joe uh, on the evangelism team. Uh, the first thing we wanna start off with is a little bit of a, uh, an overview of what the agenda is gonna be today. We're gonna talk about some news and updates. Phil's gonna, let you know what you may have missed if you if you're getting the newsletters or what's coming up on the newsletters, um, and then you know we're talking about what embedded apps actually are, and then dive into details on that what the sidebar is and how to build on the sidebar, and then we'll just wrap it up with our developer resources where else you can go to find out more things about the WebEx developer platform and our well, with our Q and A. So with that, I will pass that over to Phil to give our old, our news update. Okay, thanks Adam, and hello everybody. Um, so uh, we have a few um, you know, noteworthy things to mention today. So if you wanna put up here the first one, um, the first one, and I think it's you know, pretty important one, it's uh, you know, enhancements to the meetings experience. You know, what does that mean? So you know, over the next few months, all WebEx meetings, including those that are you know, formally done in WebEx spaces are going to start to run on our full featured WebEx suite meeting platform. Uh, so this makes for an improved and simplified experience uh, across the entire WebEx suite. It provides a common architecture, common administration uh, to unify integrations. So uh, you can learn more about these upcoming changes and how it's going to affect your apps. Um, there's a, a new blog right in the blog section of the portal. Um, but again, this is kind of going over the next few months. So it's an ongoing process. Uh, stay tuned for more updates on that story here in the near future. Um, but for all of the current information, you can check out that blog. Uh, we're pretty excited about it. There's a lot of great enhancements to the meetings platform. Um, okay, and the next one, uh, there's been uh, another great update to the mobile SDK. Uh, so uh, SDK 3.9.1 just arrived. Uh, and then now includes uh, WebEx calling capabilities to integrate with your iOS and Android apps. Uh, but again, you can read all about uh, the exciting highlights of this release uh, in a new blog by technical leader Hem Dutt. Uh, but uh, yeah, I will tell you that really the, they brought in a lot of great calling capabilities in there. Um, so you could do a lot of the things that maybe people were learning to do on premise. Uh, now you can bring this into the cloud. Um, and then our next one um, is going to be for uh, WebEx Contact Center platform. Uh, there's actually a, a couple new dialogues uh, flow samples that are on GitHub. Um, these are uh, these samples include in-depth video tutorials. Um, so this is for working with data uh, from WebEx Contact Center to Google Dialogflow CX and the other version, Dialogflow ES. And uh, for those who aren't familiar with Google Dialogflow, um, Dialogflow is a natural language understanding platform. 
Um, so they, it can integrate with the WebEx Contact Center. It provides advanced uh, IVR functionality that's interactive voice response. So in other words, dialogue flow can be leveraged to create customized self-service call flows. Um, and these better handle uh, customer requests uh, without having to involve human agents. Uh, okay, and on the next one, um, and this pertains to uh, you know the topic we're going to speak about today, or Adam's going to speak about today. Uh, recently published blog, uh, it's a guest blog actually by Hans Larson. Uh, he's from our awesome partner, Basic Ops, uh, and they show us how they built and deployed their WebEx sidebar app, uh, and they share some helpful tips too. So uh, this is a great follow up to this webinar. So uh, if you haven't got a chance already. Uh, make sure you check out that uh, uh, blog called Building Basic Ops with WebEx Sidebar Apps. And finally, um, as we announced in our last webinar too, on October 24th to the 26th uh, at the Anaheim, California Marriott, uh, you can join us virtually for, or, or live uh, at uh, WebEx One 2023. So it's a hybrid event. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss out if you join, you know, virtually, or if you actually be, are able to make it out there, uh, we're going to unveil a bunch of new innovations in hybrid work and customer experiences. We're actually going to bring a whole bunch of customers out there uh, to share their ideas, uh, you know, maybe collaborate on some projects and, you know, you help build out your, uh, your professional networks. Uh, it's going to be a great place to be. So uh, we also offer some training sessions out there and other learning tracks. Um, so go ahead and register your spot. Uh, today it's at webex1.com we hope to see everybody there and with that i think that that's the news for this time back to you adam all right great thanks phil and the first thing i would do is we'll go ahead and launch another quick little slide out for everyone wanting to know about your usage of embedded apps and have you used a webex embedded app yet So we got everybody saying yes so far. That's great. We'll let this go for just a few more, few more seconds here. And I guess if you're responding to this Slido, you probably are using a, an embedded app. Of sorts. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was my trick. That was my trick question. As far as like, we can go ahead and wrap this up, is that. You you are using an embedded app by just answering this question. Mm -hmm. So we yeah, have Slido is our was our first uh, WebEx embedded app, and we've opened it up for all other developers to build. But as you can see, it makes makes WebEx meetings uh, more seamless, and you can and interactive, and you can have everyone participating uh, within the within the app. So Phil, if you want to wrap that, close that poll. So yes, so like we said, what what are embedded apps? So we know that WebEx isn't the only app that you use, but uh, while we were working with all of our WebEx customers, we we did notice that a lot of time is spent just bouncing back and forth, sharing applications. You know, if in a meeting you'll send like a link to it to an app, and all right, is everybody on the is everybody on there? No, I'm I'm not on there. Wait a second. Um, these types of things will. Are, are those problems are solved with the WebEx embedded apps because it allows you to embed your application directly within WebEx. And so that allows you to launch these applications for everyone to participate and collaborate on within the, the app. Instead of just giving a screen share type experience, you can now have the app live and running within the WebEx client for messaging meetings. And now uh, what we're talking about today is the the WebEx, uh, WebEx app sidebar, which is all the way on the, the left side rail for most people on their WebEx app and allows you to have an app embedded over there. So we talk about the different types of WebEx embedded apps and, and even though they're still very, relatively young, they've evolved a lot since their first release. So embedded apps can be easily added to a WebEx space for a synchronous collaboration. And that way everyone in the space has access to the same app uh, for example, like in this, for this screenshot, like a, 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 there's a Miro board. So you have a Miro board uh, that is set up for, for a particular use case in the space where things are being discussed. 
you can actually click directly on that link and, and go to the, the Miro board and collaborate directly from within the WebEx space, not have to drop out to your web browser and log in or do anything else. Embedded apps also can be launched within an active meeting. So that's what you're experiencing today with the Slido app, but that this allows for real-time collaboration with, between all your meeting participants. Uh, there's another application uh, that's really popular. It's called the Share Timer app. And that app that, that's out there on the App Hub helps actually keep a meeting on schedule. You can set up defined talking times and then even have like countdowns for to, to alert when it's time to move on to the next section. So you don't have someone being a time hog in the meeting, uh, like I usually am and Phil has to shut me up a lot. Uh, the next one uh, that we wanna talk about is that sidebar. So this is what we're talking about today, this brand new uh, application context for our embedded apps. It res resides on the sidebar over by the shortcuts. If you're familiar with the shortcuts on the WebEx app, um, and there, these contexts are more tailored for a single user. So uh, the user context and allows uh, third party apps to run within the WebEx client, but outside of these collaborative spaces or meetings, uh, they give your users direct access to their apps within WebEx. Uh, for example, a user might wanna manage their team's PTO application all through the web. Um, and with sidebar apps, the PTO app can be used and to, with the embedded app SDK to get the WebEx user to actually have them log in without having to switch between the browser and the login. And finally, we while these are still technically a, a sidebar apps, we put them into a separate category called calling sidebar, uh, just for our, our purposes and, and discussion and, uh, on building on them. Um, and these use the new events uh, through the WebEx embedded app SDK that gets you calling events. So if your WebEx users are WebEx calling users, the SDK gives you the ability to get events about these calls. And we've seen this helpful in apps with like customer relation management. They can look up a customer from a caller ID and provide your users with the info before the call is even answered. And we're gonna show you a little bit of demo on that a little bit later. But as you can see, there are a lot of options available from within the WebEx embedded apps. Now, depending on your use case for the embedded apps, uh, you may want to be have your apps kept private to your organization or made public for any WebEx user. Embedded apps that are meant to be used as an internal solution or tools inside your business that only needs approval from your local admin would be something that we, we, we like to call private apps. So these private apps allow you to just have the apps available for your for your organization, and it may not be specific for, for all WebEx users. On the flip side, we do have these public apps that can be discovered and accessed by the entire WebEx community. So that these are the apps that reside on, on our WebEx app hub, and they can be installed and controlled by organization admins across uh, uh, all the different WebEx platforms and all the WebEx users. So whether, and, combination between the two of those things, you know, you can, if an app is private or public, your WebEx administrator does have the power to control who act, has access to these apps and if they have access at all. Here's some examples of our public apps on, on the App Hub. So if you go to apphub.webex.com and choose embedded apps, you will see this uh, increasingly growing list of embedded apps from our, our business partners. And we're happy to see, you know, make sure that we've got the right app for all types of use cases that are available. We also have, we're just starting to get a few in, but you know, since this is so new, but we do have a few uh, public sidebar apps on the app hub too, if you wanna check those out. Uh, obviously, like we, like we mentioned at the new section, Basic Ops has a great, meetings management app that showcases, uh, that utilizes the sidebar functionality. We also have Cooper's soon scheduling and, and uh, texting that allows you to manage your text on, on the sidebar. And we do have some app hub app requirements. So you, when you're building your embedded app, you don't really have to follow any sort of rules for internal uh, embedded apps, but if you do have a an app that you're submitting to the App Hub for all WebEx users, it, it will go through an approval process like the rest of our App Hub apps. 
But one of the big things we want to call out is that it's publicly accessible. So there, it was not something that's a locally run web server. You're going to have to have a, a, a publicly accessible HTTPS site. Um, I put on here NGROC for dev because we utilize NGROC a lot, but make sure that that, that NGROC tool is uh, compliant with your, your IT standards uh, from your organization. Uh, another requirement that we look for is that you are utilizing our embedded app SDK. Uh, it can't just be an, an app that just lives over on the sidebar or lives in an embedded app. It does need to have utilize some of the functionality from within the SDK. Um, if it doesn't, it, you may want to consider looking at maybe having that as a as a side as a um, as a shortcut app that just opens the app within the native web browser versus it doesn't use any of the functionality. And finally, one of the biggest things that we're looking for, especially for embedded apps in the messaging and meeting context, is to have that, that, that using that open for all functionality. So that when the app opens up and you want to share and, and collaborate with everyone in the meeting or the space, those are one of, that's one of the big things that we're looking for uh, when it goes through the, uh, the App Hub review. Now, when you're building with the Embedded App SDK, uh, we actually currently have two versions of the Embedded App SDK. And if you are building with the SDK v1 for messaging and meetings, um, and you would like to expand over to the WebEx sidebar, you will need to upgrade to the, the version two SDK. Um, one of the great new things that comes with the, the version two SDK is now available on NPM. So if you're using NPM modules in your web applications, it's a lot much easier process to, to pull that in and keep it updated versus using it from the CDN. But for the sake of this webinar, we're gonna, and everything we're gonna be diving into the SDK, we're gonna be talking about SDK v2. I do wanna mention one thing about personally identifiable, identifiable information in, in embedded apps, and it is that um, your apps can be controlled by the organization admin if they, have, if they are allowed access to this PII data. So PII data is the, web, the WebEx user's personal data, uh, some things like the user ID, user email, and even the user name. Uh, meeting information about the, like, at the meeting ID and title that the, that the meeting is in, and the messaging space information, like the space ID and the space title. Now that, that information you can be used to cut, really customize your embedded app, but you do need to make sure that it handles the situation where the embedded app uh, PII is turned off by the admin. That is another thing that we that we check during the app hub review. Um, if it so, for for example, if you have one that really requires the PII to be enabled, you're going to have to submit a, a warning saying that this this app doesn't work very well uh, when the PII is disabled. Now, what happens when the PII is disabled is that you will get derived values from, from the third-party information for, for your WebEx user. You won't get anything really identifiable for the developer or for, for the user, but you will have, um, they will be consistent. So you can't identify across, across sessions. So if someone leaves and returns back to a meeting in an open your embedded app, uh, PII is disabled. The your app will get the derived user ID value uh, that matches to that user, but you cannot find any information about that user. You just know that that person was already there. So that concludes our, our portion about what embedded apps are. I wanna take some time to really dive into what the webinar is about, and that's uh, this new sidebar and the features that you get with the WebEx embedded app sidebar. The first biggest thing that we have is called is always on support. So this is a configuration that you can enable uh, on your admin side that makes your app stay online and stays open. Uh, it does not close. It stays. Uh, you know, it doesn't require. It doesn't clear off. It just stays open within your WebEx app. And this is really helpful for uh, when you're using the SDK to get calling events. If you want to. If you want, you don't have to make sure that your app is loaded for to receive these events. It will stay loaded within the WebEx app, and you will get information about all these events coming through the SDK. So, for example, if a user gets a call, they'll get an event for that call. And that's what makes it a lot different than what you may be experiencing with your your app shortcuts, where it's just the there's no guarantee that the app is going to stay fresh. If the user's logged in, 
and then they log out and, or they switch switch tabs off of your shortcut and then come back in. The app may have been cleared out to uh, clear up some memory. And uh, for, for WebEx sidebar embedded apps, if the always on support is enabled, that, that will not happen. Another feature that the, uh, the sidebar SDK allows you to do is add badges to your users' WebEx embedded apps. So these are, you know, little notification symbols. Um, we have different types of notifications or badges that you can show. There's one, the one that's showing on screen here is the count. Uh, so you can increase the count. So say there's a unread messages or action items that you need to do from your app. You can alert your WebEx user that there's an action item by setting these, these badges. There's also a, an error badge, so if there's something that really needs attention, you can set the red, it'll turn it red with an exclamation point and uh, allows you to really send those notifications to your WebEx users from within, from within your web app. And these are fully programmable through the SDK. Another thing that the sidebar SDK gets you is the context uh, of the WebEx application itself. So you you know like we said talking about the PII you can get user information that's being uh, for the current WebEx user, but you also could do things like you can get like the app theme. So if you have a light or dark theme in your WebEx app and someone changes it, you can update your web app to match that current WebEx app theme. So if you've got a light theme and you want to have that your app show the light theme. It, you can match it up and it gives that user a consistent feeling. It really makes them feel engaged in, in your app that it's really embedded deep into the WebEx ecosystem. You can also un, you get information about the view state of the WebEx app. So if someone moves, someone has your app loaded, but then moves away and un, unselects it and moves off to another application, you will you will get that information. You also get information about the device type that your app is being run on. So if it's a desktop app or a browser, uh, you can get that information. And there's also the display context. So you can, if your app runs in multiple different application contexts, like the sidebar, the meetings, or messaging, you can find out about uh, where that app is actually being run in. And then finally, that PII, it will, it will tell you that if you have PII enabled or not, without having to go through and determine if you have a, um, user information coming through, you can just check that PII, see if it's enabled. Then once you know that it's enabled, you can move, you can start doing what you need to do within your application. And one of the big features that has been requested, and these, you know, this is coming over from, from, our, from our sidebar, is from our WebEx calling application. And these will allow you to get information about your WebEx calling uh, your users calls. So you can you can actually, there's a, a function call that allows you to actually list all the active calls that that user has going on right now. Uh, but then you also get SDK event notifications about the changes to the call state. So as a call's coming in, uh, is, does it, has it been answered? Is it on hold? Has it, have they, have they hung up? You get all that information and what works through the entire call state flow uh, with events. And finally, we have a few other features here. We we do have the ability to have links uh, open up into the system browser. We know not everyone wants to use the browser within within the uh, WebEx client. And if you need to do something to jump out to your system browser, we do have a function to, to do that. Um, and one other thing is we did want to call out is that for sidebar apps, especially with the always on support, we allow three primary apps per organization that your org admin will control uh, for your sidebar apps. Now for the fun part. Now I'd like to you know, dive into some of the, the SDK code and do a little tour of some of the functions that are available for, for developers. Yeah, so like I mentioned that application object, this is, where, this is your main interface into the embedded apps and then into WebEx. You, what you're going to do is create a new instance of the, the WebEx application. So this will be once you've pulled in your application uh, from the SDK, you'll create that application instance. And then uh, we're going to call this function that's called onReady. And we'll wait for that 
that promise to resolve or, or wait it. And once that's done, that then the SDK alerts you that, yep, I'm communicating with the WebEx application. We're ready to go. We can, you know, want all the data about the WebEx information. The user is populated now in the SDK. And now you can start doing whatever the processing is that you need from your application side. Next week, you know, we mentioned events, calling events, and, and other events that come across. These are some of some of the events that you can listen to when they're coming across. Uh, the first thing you want to do is tell the SDK app instance to listen for events. Uh, the, those events will not come across until you call that function. Once you call that function, you'll start getting events. You can use the on listeners to really handle whenever those those events happen. Uh, the first first code block I have here is the you know the call state change. So this is that what we're talking about where that call object comes in, tells you that you've got an incoming call or that your call went on hold. Anything that like that that you need, you will be through that that call state changed event. There's also uh, a few application events that come through, like the view state changed. So that's just what I was talking about where I was saying you know when the app is selected or not selected. You'll let that it will come across with that view state changed event, and then uh, the theme change event. So, I, if you've got users that are constantly switching between light and dark themes, you can you can quickly monitor those and and update your app just right off the bat. Um, and then once you're done listening, if you don't want to receive any more events, there is a function called stop listening that you can call, and that will stop receiving those events. There's also this thing called the sidebar object within the application context. So you see here, this is this is where you get some information about your badges and calls and can do things with them. Uh, so what we're going to do on, on this, what we're doing here in this code is we're, we're getting the sidebar application uh, object. And then we can do things like we can find out what the current badge state is by using that sidebar dot badge. Um, and then that comes with things like the badge count and the badge type. So you can, if you want to see what the current status is of the of the badge, you can use that. Um, there's also a, a function to show the badges. So like I said, you know, if you're getting, uh, if you need to have an action item for for your app for your WebEx user, then you can uh, call the show badge function, and that's where you set the type the type of badge. So it's either count uh, or or it's an error. And you can set the, the actual number on the on the count to display. If you want to clear the badge, that's that next line of code where you say sidebar dot clear badge, and that will clear your badge. Also discover that if you set the count to zero, that's another another way to do it. Uh, and then finally, that that calls. You know, I uh, I mentioned before you you can get information about the current calls that the user has going on if they're a WebEx calling user. You can call this get calls function, and it will give you an, an array of the, the calls that the WebEx user is currently on. So that kind of wraps it up on the the diving into all the functionality on the SDK. I think there's not a, there's not a lot there, so there's a lot to, uh, but it is very powerful and it, it really expands what you can do with WebEx embedded apps. Uh, I did want to showcase some of our, our documentation. And uh, the Embedded App SDK has a great new um, developer tool, uh, developer docs located at EAF, so Embedded App Framework SDK.WebEx.com. Give you a quick little tour of that right now. Um, what's, what's really great is that this is, is a fun, uh, great generated application uh, documentation page. Uh, if you're migrating from SDK one to two, you could you, you they've got a nice section here on on what you need to do and what you the changes you need to make. You can dive into the different types of of objects uh, coming through the sidebar, and I just suggest you just kind of dive into this this uh, documentation page to start really learning about all the things that the embedded app SDK uh, version two allows you to do. And that we also have a, a demo app that we've built, and I want to kind of walk through a quick little uh, demo of this demo app that we've got, and and explain what we're what we're doing. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and start this. So what we've got, 
we have a, a demo app that is a customer relationship management app that does a quick lookup on your on your customer as a call is coming in. So you see over here on the sidebar, this is where our app lives, that, that icon. So when we select it, it's going to bring up the um, our app within the side so uh, sidebar. So you see now it's taken over the entire WebEx application. And so here's this is our demo app that we've got running. Uh, it's getting information from our SDK, things like our, our user profile, we can go up here and click into and see that we've got a, a user. These are the details that we're getting from the user, like our username, email, and organization ID. Uh, we just got this being displayed here, but you can utilize this to customize your application's experience, which is a really great feature by knowing which users are using your app. But what I want to show you here is the calling event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, place a call to this WebEx user and see uh, what happens with our, our WebEx app and what, as it receives that event. So now the call is coming in. You see that we've got, um, it did a quick look up on our profile information, our customer profile. We see if we've got some information about their phone number. If we want to, we can, our application can search and get some more details about this user. And, and before we ever even answer the phone. So now that we've, we've got some information, we're ready to answer the phone for him. So we're gonna go over here and I will answer the call. And you see that now that we've answered the call, the status bar has changed to connected. And it lets you know that that call is now being connected. Uh, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna place that call on hold so, so you can see that event come through and our app updates and showcases, yep, that call is on hold now. So we we know that we've got the call, he's on hold, we can do some more imp things on there. I'm gonna resume the call, show that it goes back to our connected, so our call's back connected now, and then we can wrap up the call. Uh, actually, before I do that, the, the badge over here on the left side, This uh, so our demo app sets the amount of uh, calls that are active, to the badges. So if you watch the badge, once we end the call, now the badge cleared, there's no more calls active, the ended status updated, and now that's it's a quick little showcase of our the, the calling SDK side of the embedded app sidebar. Um, and you also we also have these just raw printout of all the events that have come across. You can see all the details about the call ID who the local participant was, what the remote participant was, and if, if there's a name that the WebEx understands. And yeah, that, so that, that is our sidebar demo app that we have. And it is up and available now on our uh, GitHub. So if you go to um, our GitHub slash WebEx samples is where you can find a lot of our sample demo apps. We've got that up. I'll give you a quick little tour on it. The code base, if you wanna take a look here, uh, it is just a, a basic React application. Uh, a lot of our app uh, information is pulled into the app.js file. So if you wanna dive in, look through, we've got some events here. Most of the, the calling information is all in this right at the beginning here where you can, you're getting these call events. What we're doing here in the code base is just taking that call events and doing a little data massage and throwing it into an array that React can use to display our application. So now that you've got your app built, what do you do to get it to your users? And that's where the app admin uh, comes in or your WebEx admin comes in and goes through Control Hub. And that's all through our control hub panel, which is admin.webex.com. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of that, what that looks like. And, oh, almost, we almost hit, kept up, but our time we timed out, so I'm gonna log in real quick here, Webex devs. and pray to the demo gods that I can type correctly a password. So this is our admin portal, our control hub for our WebEx admins. Uh, what you're gonna do 
is we're going to go down here under uh, application management and we're going to go to apps. And as you see in the apps, we've got uh, all of our apps here, integrations, bots, our embedded apps are going to live in this embedded apps tab. And so as you see on the, like we talked about the public and private apps, the public apps are all the apps on the app hub. So this is where I was saying where you, your org admin can go in and turn on and off apps from the public app hub. But right now, since we're in development, our app is going to be a private app. It showed up here because I've already asked for the admin to approve it, but the admin can always go in here, change this to the status to in development, denied or approved. And there's also a feature where if you want, if you want to approve the app, but only want it for a certain set of users, we do have the ability to select a, a, a group that you can use uh, and approve it for that select user instead of all your entire org. Uh, some extra settings down here on the sidebar, obviously the showing app in the sidebar, um, like we talked about the making it always on, we're going to, you're going to need to have that on if it is a calling app and, and make sure that to, if you need to get those SDK events for the calling, you're going to want to make sure you have that set to always on. Um, and there's a feature that that's been brought over from from if you're a Jabber user, that's where you can customize your app URL. So you see that you know all our apps have like a start page URL with that loads up, but you can also now add some custom query parameters. So if you've got uh, an app that you only want a certain set of users, or you want to give it a specific context, you can say context, and then like sales or something like that, and then you see that. It adds these query parameters onto the URL. So this is what opens up and your app can grab from the query parameters directly from it. So you don't have to configure that in, in, uh, in App Hub, but you can have your org admins do some things specific for, for their instance. And, then, and finally, that PII is, this is what I was talking about where the org admin allow, can control whether they have access to PII or not for your app and turning it on or off. Right now, we you know, obviously we have it on because we show, show, as we saw in our demo, we were able to get information specific about that user, including their email address. So that was a quick little tour of the Control Hub. Um, and yeah, really excited to talk to you about embedded apps and, and showcase those. Uh, one of the first things we wanna do is, if you're wanting to build those is look at our WebEx developer sandbox. So this is, this now allows you to uh, create your own free WebEx org that you can play around with and start building things on. This is really helpful, especially for us, you know, uh, on, Cisco, on the Cisco side where there's a, you know, we have so many users on, on WebEx and if you don't want to bother your organization's uh, admin team to while you're develop in development, uh, developer Sandbox is a great place to get started before you ever even have to submit for any sort of like an IT approval or anything like that. Uh, you can really test out everything. And I think you get full, five full licenses for WebEx for meet, messaging meetings and, and calling. Um, so that's, it's a really good place to get started with, with a developer sandbox. We also have tons of resources out there for you. Uh, obviously, our developer portal, developer.webex.com. We are on Twitter or now X. I guess we need to update the logo on this, Phil. <laughs> uh, at Webex Devs. Appreciate the follow on there. We announce uh, anything that, that's been, as they're being released, web, webinars and blogs, uh, and open up discussions on there. We also have our Webex developer community forums. That's what that cs.co Webex developer community takes you to. So that that is where all of our communication with all of our fellow WebEx developers happen. So across multiple companies and our uh, developer support team are, are quickly monitored, are always monitoring that space too, as you have questions. It's a great place to really engage with other developers in the WebEx ecosystem. Um, we also, we love open source. Uh, so we do have a few different spaces on, on GitHub uh, github.com slash webex is our official github repo that's where our sdks and widgets code and, and other codes from our engineering team lives and and that's where you'll find that uh, webex samples like we saw today that's where we've got sample code that you can quickly grab and get started on a, on a project that you're looking through 
And then we also have WebEx community. So if you like, like uh, our bot building, our bot building tool, the the Node Bot framework, that's all maintained by our WebEx community. And so those all those projects live over in the WebEx community GitHub repo. And of course, the App Hub that we saw today, uh, which is available uh, for all of the apps, including your embedded apps and sidebar apps. So we're excited to see you what you build, and hopefully, we can get you up on the WebEx App Hub. And with that, I think we can, that ends the presentation, but if we've got some Q&A coming through. Um, we had a couple questions here. Um, it's here, like uh, Sean, I guess a couple questions, Sean Scott, um, you know, and he asked, did any chance WebEx whiteboards will be an OEM sidebar app? He's seen some marketing images from Cisco with that, but Cisco hasn't made any announcements about that. Um, you know, and I answered in there, um but generally speaking you know the uh the sidebar apps are generally tailored for individual users in, in those type of use cases uh where you know whiteboards we generally associate you know with like a inside a meeting where people are going to be collaborating or even inside a space uh and both of those contexts are already available uh without it and uh actually built into the webex app uh, where you can go into a space and you can start a new whiteboard and everybody in that space can, you know, collaborate together on that whiteboard. Um, and then the same thing in the meeting, uh, you'll see a little thing where you can start drawing a whiteboard. I believe there's even one here in the webinar. Um, but uh, Adam, so I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, I, I, I haven't heard yet if they are planning on integrating. I know there's, there's plans for, for that and, and, um, I know even our vid, vidcast team are investigating some things uh, around deeper integrations. So I think yeah, I think the whiteboard actually does. I, I use the WebEx whiteboard a lot uh, just through the browser uh, in addition to the client. So I think it makes sense to have it there. So we can reach out to that whiteboard product team and see where they're at. Great. Um, and um, we also have another question here from, from John. Um, you know, is there any app that will allow the use of a single PSTN number for calling and use the same PSTN number for fax? Um, you know, some countries are still using fax for doctors, healthcare professionals. I think they even do that here in the U.S. still. Um, mm -hmm. Now, you know, I went through the, you know, a lot of the calling APIs recently. So, I, I you know, I saw a little bit about, like, some of the things that administrators can do. Uh, and I know administrators can set up virtual lines. They they can associate fax numbers and primary voice lines. So, you know, perhaps it, it, I know this isn't a developer interface or anything like that. And this is probably a better question for our calling experts. Uh, but I think that that could be tied where you have a virtual line or virtual number that, you know, be a singular number that can service as your primary voice and your fax. So basically, you're taking your existing fax number and your existing primary voice and giving it a singular endpoint. Um, but that's like an administrative task. Uh, so Joe or, or Adam, I don't know if any of you have heard anything different about that. Yeah, I haven't. I that yeah, like you said, the the WebEx community for for calling would probably be a really good place to start with that with that question for sure. Yeah, uh -huh. I would also look on uh, help.webex.com. For, for these kind of user facing questions as well. Yeah, sure. but I don't, I don't believe it's an app that'll do it, but it's a, it's an administrator function um, that they'll have to get set up as part of the configuration in your deployment. Um, and then the, the final question we had was from Sean um, and I didn't know the answer to this one, you know, WebEx for Intune, you know, would it open a system browser open in uh, Microsoft Edge? Um, I did a little research on WebEx for Intune. Uh, it looks like that mm -hmm. one was built with the with Microsoft's SDK. Uh, it didn't use any of our uh, developer interfaces to to build that particular one. Um, so I haven't used it, and so I, I I'm not privy to that answer. Yeah, I don't know if embedded apps are supported on the WebEx for Intune either. So that that would be something that we'd have to to dive into. Yeah. All right. With that, any other questions rolling in while we've been going through that? No, I think that was about it. All right. Well, you know, you know where to find us on the developer community. 
and uh, on our on our Twitter account. So uh, you know, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out and look forward to seeing what you're building. Thank you everyone for your time.